So new morphism or soft UI as it's also known. This seems to be getting talked about quite a lot at the moment. Some people are pegging it as a trend for 2020, but whether it sticks or not, I've got no idea personally, but I'm curious to see what designers do with it. Regardless, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create this effect in Adobe XD. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to jump into Adobe XD and I'm going to show you how to create this new morphic style from scratch. Now, if you would like a head start, you can download the project files in the video description. This has like a mini UI kit. I say mini, I really do mean mini. It's like a mobile screen, but I've created a few UI elements in this new morphic style. So you can just jump straight in and start creating something. But if you would like to follow along with this tutorial, we're gonna jump to the screen now and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe XD and you can see on screen I have a mini UI kit. Feel free to download this, it's linked in the video description and it utilizes the soft UI or new morphic design style that we're going to be learning in this tutorial. So up here, you can see I have two master components. We have up and we have down, or that's what I've named them anyway. You can name yours whatever you like. I've called this one up because as you can see, it's kind of raised up off the surface and the one below is kind of more down, like it goes down into the surface. So you can call this up, down, outer, inner, whatever you like. And I've also got the colors over here as well in the asset panel. This is really useful because it means that I can make any document wide changes really quickly and easily. In fact, I can actually go into these master components by double clicking and I can go and change the property of the shadows that we're going to be using to create this style. And I can make those changes really quickly and easily to these master components and it updates across the entire document. And I've actually set these both up as square, but as you can see, I can use component overrides to round off the corners. So this entire kit, well, I mean, I say entire kit, this teeny tiny kit is powered by these two components pretty much alone, apart from all the buttons and things, obviously. Okay, so first things first, let's start from scratch. We'll select our components, our colors. I'll leave this color here if you would like to follow along. And I'm gonna drag over everything and we'll just delete this. We'll even delete this folder here. There we go. We have a completely blank canvas. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna go and grab the rectangle tool up here and we'll just zoom in. And I'm gonna left click and hold shift to draw a square. Now from the property inspector, I'm gonna set the width and height to 100 pixels. Let's be specific about this. And I'm gonna go down here, deselect the border, and I'm gonna set the fill color to the same color as the background. There we go, nice and easy. And I'm also gonna go over here to shadow, we'll enable that. I'm just gonna make sure that I am using black all the way in the bottom left corner. And for starters, I'm just gonna crank this up to 100%. Now for my X and Y offset, you can change these values depending on how pronounced you would like your shadows to be. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna go with five and five. It's important that they're equal. And the blur, again, if you'd like to have this softer, go for 20. If you'd like to have it less soft or harder, yeah, that's the opposite of soft, hard. If you'd like to have it <laughs> less soft, then you could choose something like 10. So I think I might, I'm gonna settle on 10 perhaps and maybe bump the X and the Y up to six a piece. Okay, there we go, fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is select this piece here and if you're on a Mac you can go up to edit down to duplicate and if you're on Windows you can press Control D. There we go we have a duplication and we can drag this out over here. What I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to take these values and just change this to minus six and you can see it goes up the other way. Now we can select the shadow color and make that white. There we go. Now we can bring these back together. XD snaps them together. And there we go. We've uh, we've created a very basic soft UI element. In fact, I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see. There we go. And I can click this now and go and adjust the opacity. So I might bring this down to 80%. 
nudge this out the way. If you do have any trouble selecting the different elements, what you can do is just name them over here in your layers panel. So I'll call this one light and the one below dark. It makes selecting them a little bit easier if they are stacked on top of each other. So now for the dark one, I'm going to leave the color as it is, but I'm going to adjust the opacity. There you go. So 20% here, maybe go back to the light. No, I think 80% is good. And I like the fact that those values total up to 100%. That's nice. Okay, so fantastic. We have our light and our dark. We can drag over them, right click and select make component. And we could go and call this up. And then what I could do is hold alt or option and drag to create a copy of this. And if I just switch over to my layers panel, I can actually go inside the component, select both the light and the dark and adjust the radius. So I could type in hundred and you can see that turns into a circle. So if you want to create soft UI style circles, you can do this by starting with a square or we could just go for something like 20 and just round them off slightly. So it depends entirely on what you're looking for. And as I say, if I go back to this master component, I can double click, make some changes, everything gets affected. Okay, so that's the up or the outer. Now let's go for the down or the inner. Now there's a few different ways you can actually do this. And in the free download, I kind of did it a bit of a clunky way, but I'm actually going to try a different way now that I think is a little bit better and works more effectively for circles as well. So doing the inner shadow is a little bit different. So again, I'm going to start with the rectangle tool and create a square that is 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels high. And I'm going to deselect the fill, same as we did before, but this time I'm going to set the border to black. Make sure everything is at 100%. And instead of using shadow, I'm going to go down to blur and select object blur, bring this up. You can see you can adjust it depending on how blurry you would like this to be, but you can also adjust the border and you can see that that changes it. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So we have our dark one here and I'm then going to do nothing there because that's not where duplicate is. Remember duplicate is up here or command or control D on the keyboard. And I'm going to hold shift and use the arrow keys to nudge this one out. Change the color of this to white. And then I'm actually going to duplicate this one again. Hold shift and use the arrow keys to nudge this one out. The one on the very left, I'm actually going to get rid of the blur, get rid of the border and just give this a really bright, funky color. There we go. Bright purple because we're going to be using this as a mask, so it doesn't actually matter what color we give it. So what I'm going to do is just make sure this is selected. I'll drag this one on top and I'm going to call this mask and this one dark and then the remaining one light, just so I don't get mixed up. And then what I'm going to do is hold shift, use the arrow keys to nudge these all back together and essentially they will stack up on top of each other. In fact, for the mask, it might be easier if I just have a border just for a moment so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So what's inside this border is essentially going to be how our inner shadow appears. So with the dark one, we'll start with this first. You can drag holding shift to pull this out or you can enter a value up here. If you're interested in precision, I can't say precision, precision. So we'll go 120 by 120. And you can see what this does is it pushes this bottom right corner outside of the mask. So this will all be invisible and only this part here will be visible. So you can see how this is going to work. Next, we'll select the light one. And again, we'll do 120 by 120. And we'll nudge this one up to the left. Now it's quite hard to see this, so I'm just going to change the color briefly just so I can see the position and everything. Check it's all good. So that looks good to me. I'll change this back to white. Select all these layers up here and then on Mac go up to object 
down to mask with shape. If you're on Windows, remember, right click and you get the same option. And it will group these all together. And I'll call this one down. And I can go inside here and I've still got all of my layers intact. So I can click on the dark one and we can adjust the opacity here so I can bring this down. I can go and tweak the color. Select the light. Yep, happy with that. Remember I can adjust the blur. So you do get a little bit more control with this method and you can also adjust the border size as well. So you can tinker around with that, but essentially that gives you a really nice inner shadow. And of course we can then select this, go to, where are we going? Right click, make component. There we go, we get our down component already named, fantastic, thank you XD. And the reason that I think this method is more effective for the down or the inner shadow is it works better for circles as well. So you'll see in the download that I used a kind of different technique to do the inner shadows. But if I go in here and I select all of those layers and then let's say round this off at 100 on the radius or some really high number, you can see the shadow follows that circle all the way around really nicely. And we can actually go in and we could push those out a little bit further towards the edge if we wanted. I would probably keep this master as a square, duplicate it, go in, and then do it this way. So you can see I could round this off and that inner shadow follows the edge of the mask. And to be honest, we're pretty much done now. So if I just zoom back out, we've now got all of these different components what I like to do is put the masters outside the document or you can even include them in the document and then we can actually start to build out various elements like buttons and things all with these instances of our master components so remember we're just double clicking to go inside if you have any trouble selecting just use your layers panel and then we're just changing things like the corner radius and there we go we can create a whole bunch of different UI elements just like the ones that you can see in the free download and they're all based on these two master components so there we go, new Morphic or soft UI design. That's how you create it all in XD. So go crazy, have fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.